This is me. I'm a cartoonist, but I'm not just a cartoonist. I'm also a writer, a children's book illustrator, a commercial illustrator, a caricaturist at times, a frequent visitor to schools and libraries, a tennis player, a volunteer, and a caregiver. And this short video is a brief introduction to how this came to be this. I was the product of a newspaper reporter and an artist who was also a writer. The combination of these two made for a wildly creative household where no one was actually able to balance a checkbook. My dad taught me to laugh at myself, to pour a beer correctly, and to write with a sense of humor. My mom taught me to always appreciate the magical, to always send the men for ice while we pitch the tent, and to draw often and well. So, armed with all this creativity and no sense of money, I began to ponder my choices in the world. I thought early on that I'd like to write and illustrate children's books, but my first attempts were unusual and not terribly well received, so I began to explore other possibilities. I considered archery for a while. I liked the outfits, but the job opportunities seemed limited. I tried working with animals, but the animals weren't always into it. I really liked the idea of being a cowboy, and not just any cowboy, but a cowboy surgeon. That would be cool. I even tried dancing, but not for very long. Eventually, I just couldn't escape my genes, so I got a degree in journalism from Arizona State University, thereby becoming a sixth-generation journalist. Nice picture, huh? Dad and I got those handsome matching jackets for Christmas. He did not normally dress like that. Anyway, after graduation, I took my first real job as a reporter for the Pasadena Star News in California. Still, I kept thinking, is this really what I want to do, or would I rather be doing something else? I don't know, a tiger tamer maybe? Travel the world with a dog and a really bad hairdo? I was working in Pasadena at the time and living near Hollywood, so it was inevitable that I would eventually try my hand at acting. And I managed to snag the starring role in a low-budget but critically acclaimed little film based, coincidentally, on a newspaper. City desk. To show you how it happens, let's follow just one news story from our city. Oh, where's this happening? Many stories start at my desk, since okay, I'm the city happening? editor in charge of news of our city. Okay, a raccoon, huh? Uh, can I get your name and phone number and have a reporter call you back? A baby raccoon is trapped in an old attic and a game warden is going to rescue it. Okay, I'll have somebody call you. Thanks for calling. Bye. But I wonder if this story is important enough to put in the paper. Jenny, you got a minute? So I asked reporter Jenny Campbell to get some more information. This guy called Harrington. Is this a common thing, people trapping raccoons in their attics? The reporter learns that wild animals in the city are a serious problem. Hundreds. Every year? Hundreds are born in houses every spring, but they're dangerous for people to keep. Our readers should be warned. Unfortunately, my acting career didn't really pan out either. So finally, after 13 years in the newspaper business, I decided that maybe I'd had the right idea in the first place. Maybe I thought I should be a cartoonist and illustrate all those children's books I'd always dreamed of illustrating. So I quit my job, I moved east to Philadelphia, and I became a freelance cartoonist without any idea of what it actually means to be a freelance cartoonist. But I hung out my shingle and declared myself a cartoonist. My early digs weren't glamorous, but they served the purpose and I started making money however I could. I printed out cards, I painted t-shirts, I attended some truly dismal craft shows, whatever I could do to make a buck. Eventually, I found an artist's rep and actually started getting real jobs that paid me real money. When I moved to Chagrin Falls in 1996, I left my agent behind and things really started to pick up for me. And now it's been more than 20 years since I embarked on this crazy ride. And except for sometimes when I sort of wish I'd stuck out that cowboy surgeon thing, I've never looked back.